Uh, before I announce who this member is, I just wanted to say that I, you know, it'd be really great to, the, you'll get a lot out of this club if you participate a lot, basically at the end of the year. Here's more motivation. At the end of the year, there's spring banquet, you're gonna have a drawing. So for every event you attended, you get one ticket in the bucket, right? So the more events you attend, the more chances you have of winning the grand prize. Um, last year, our grand prize winner was Sylvia Castro, who won Woo! Vegas. Vegas, too. Yeah. Oh, definitely, definitely attend, because look, we're gonna be having the drawing again. So the more events you attend, the higher chances of our winning. And so our January member of the month goes to Yes, it is, and um, I know you submitted something in paper, which I actually haven't scanned yet, but if you see something that you know was on there, and or if you need something else, I can find it for you and email it to you directly, so I'd rather you just email me, and I can like scour over like the back of the like, test bank if I can get in there, or have some stuff from a while ago, I can just email it to you, so send me the class you need and say, hey, I need exam two, or I need lab exam two, and I'll try to get as much as I can to you. Um, you can hand them to me in person. Oh, um, PDF works best. Uh, yeah, just uh, send it in an attachment, PDF, or a zip file. Either one. Uh, just attach it, say, and I hold it to the so I'd love to give you my thank commissions to mark it down for the commercial credit and I'll make sure that you get Yes, lab exam. Class ready lab exams, practical stuff like that. And HB and math also helps too. Right? A lot of the big colleges. Yes. Um, do you normally feel like you're in the same class? Yeah. Um, if you want the code, email me and I'll send it to you directly. And um, I'm fairly fast about that. If you go to the website and put it in the contact us box, it's my phone via text message. So I'm really snappy about sending you things back. Um, you sent me something this weekend and it took me until like today or Monday to reply. I apologize. I had to but usually within a few hours I can send you back what you asked for. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, just through the website. It's the best. Yeah. All right. So um, today, what we're going to be doing is um, Kyle and I are actually going to be walking you guys through the application process, which is a really daunting thing, but it's not that bad after you know if you get some help. I'm just curious, how many of you guys are planning to apply for dental school this upcoming cycle? Raise your hand. Awesome. Um, how many of you guys have already applied? Okay, so look around. Those are definitely people you want to get help and advice from. Um, this dental school application thing isn't as bad as it seems. There's a little bit of, you know, stuff involved, but we're going to be walking through you guys through this process today. Um, do you know how to turn your lights on? about ADSAS and how you guys are going to apply for dental school, especially um, for those of you who are planning to apply at the end of this, or at this, during this cycle in June. All right, so um, if you go to the ADA ADSAS website, you're going to see that this cycle, this upcoming cycle is going to open on June 4th, 2012, the date that you want to keep in mind. Um, does anyone, what's going on? <laughs> Okay. All right, anyhow, um, does anyone know what is rolling admissions? You guys, what's rolling admissions, do you know? Uh, yeah. <coughs> yeah, so basically, um, dental schools operate they're on a rolling admissions system where, you know, they review the applications as it comes in. So. Um, it's kind of like a first come first serve basis. So in DDS, we always tell you if you want to do well in the application cycle, you want to get everything in. You want to get your application submitted as soon as possible. Um, you know, June 4th, 2012, if you're applying this cycle, that'd be a great day to submit your application. So like I said, to maximize your chances of getting into dental school, if you're worried about your chances, um, Submit your application early in the cycle, i.e. June 4th, 2012. It'll guarantee you know, a very good shot of getting in because they, they review all the applications as they come in. They don't wait and you know wait until like December and review all the applications at once. All right, so this is what AdSAS looks like. When you, when you log in and create an application on AdSAS, this is what you're gonna see. This is actually my AdSAS. I just took a screenshot of it. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be walking through you guys through all of the application checklist steps. The first, the first part of the applicant information, those are really easy stuff. We're going to start with biographic information. There's nothing to it, you know, just um, you enter all of your information here. There's more at the bottom, but I didn't take pictures of that. Um, then there's parents and family information that's relatively straightforward. There's background information. This is, there's one really interesting question here, I think, which is um, the first one, describe any activities requiring manual dexterity. So, um, you know, before you apply, definitely think of stuff you do that requires, you know, that requires manual dexterity that you're really good at, i.e., you know, maybe some of you like sculpting or jewelry making or, I don't know, knitting. Just, you know, think of stuff that you do. Um, there's also, a whole host of other questions, but those are also relatively straightforward. This is also part of the same background information. And then there's a disadvantage status. So, um, you know, if any of these apply to you, answer it. I'm kind of breezing through, through these sections because they're really straightforward. Okay, so then we come to the secondary high school information. Also relatively straightforward, you enter, you know, where you went for high school, what year you graduated, um, and then colleges attended. Here you list um, every single institution that you have attended throughout your undergraduate career. So these are, you know, the schools that I attended. I went to USC, um, I'm getting my degree from here, but I took summer school classes at, you know, Cal State Los Angeles and Cal State Northridge. So this is where I would put it down. This is actually where you're going to print your transcript matching form. I'll go into that a little later. Um, you need your transcript matching form to submit it with your application with your official transcript, and you're going to send that to ASAP. 
And then you're gonna put in your coursework. So this is like, you know, a sample of the coursework. Um, you're gonna put it in every semester that you have taken. You're gonna put all your coursework in. The one thing that I forgot when I submitted in my application, if you guys took like AP or IB classes, um, put those classes in. I put it under like my semester one information, but that kind of delayed my application a little because I forgot to put that in, so they had to send it back to me, and um, I had to put those in after. <coughs> So it's kind of confusing, but make sure you put you know any AP classes, IB classes you took. Yes. I I just put it under my first uh, fall semester courses. They're not like a calculated as part of your grade. I didn't really know where I was supposed to put them. <laughs> That's why. Yeah, I think I think I would just put it under my fall semester courses. That includes uh, courses not related. You mean like the AP things? Yeah, basically, this is the rule of thumb. Anything that occurs on your transcript should be on here. So if, if you know, these courses do appear on your transcript because you get credit for them, put them on here. Or else ADSAS will return your application to you and they're, they're going to say, it's not complete, you have to put these in. Um, so this is the coursework section. Um, oh, I know a lot of you are curious. You hear a lot about BCP. Does anyone of you know what BCP is? Yeah? Exactly. Okay. So a lot of you ask, the constant question is, what is considered BCP? So I found a list from um, the website. All of these courses are included in BCP. So there's biology, chemistry, and physics. And you can see the list of courses that are considered for each of them. And what is considered other science? It's basically, you know, anything that's science but not part of BCP. So, um, like astronomy or dental hygiene, engineering, mathematics, um, kinesiology, which is my major, any of these. Um, and then there's the other courses are considered non science. So, any of these, you know, if you're taking business classes, um, communication classes, economics, um, music, foreign language, any of those, those are considered non sciences. And then they have a section for English. Okay, um, and then other question that's frequently asked is how is your GPA calculated in ADSAS? Because that's really important for your application. So this is the grading scale that they actually use. As you can see, um, an A is uh, four, A minus is 3.667, and down the row you can see. So um, the BCP, G they're gonna, you're gonna have, I think, three GPA calculated. There's going to be the BCP GPA, which is all of your undergraduate courses that are identified as biology, chemistry, or physics. You're going to have a science GPA, which includes the BCP plus um, any other science courses that you've taken. So like, I took a lot of kinesiology classes as a kinesiology major, so those would fall under my science GPA. And then you have